So this is The Pain and Struggle of Growing a Beard, written by Johnny Brace. Uh, interior, interior supermarket day, Lena, 23 female, walks through the aisle, a polite smile on her face as she avoids everyone else. Her look of or uh, her look a mix of charity shop finds and curly hair. My parents raised me to be their perfect daughter, polite and respectful. Crash, the shopping trolley crashes into her. I'm so sorry. Sorry about that. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Uh, the other controlled by, well, a wanker, 33, male, slick. You're sorry. You should watch where you're bloody going. I'm really <laughs> sorry. The wanker walks past her. He talks into a phony piece. Sorry about that, Monty. Just dealing with a pleb. Can't believe I bought a brand new Ferrari here. Here with this riffraff. V8, yeah, yeah. Lena watches him go, a polite smile on her face. It's actually quite easy to be polite. All you have to do. He turns a corner, her polite smile turns to mischief. His wait to do anything impolite when no one is watching. Exterior supermarket car park day. The wanker walks through the car park. He still talks into the earpiece as he begins to eat his meal deal sandwich. Yeah, I'd just been released. Cherry red. Not a 60 in. He halts, his face drops. Around a brand new Ferrari, a series of shopping trolleys have been placed to block its path. He looks around for a culprit trying to hide his anchor. OK. Ha ha. Very funny. Whoever you are. Play a plank on a rich kid, but if there's a scratch on it, oh, I will small claims this bitch. Two old ladies give him a funny look as he goes up to the car. He pulls one of the trolleys, but it won't budge. He pulls again, but it won't move at all. He inspects it and finds it's been cable tiled, tied to his wheel. Oh, for fuck's sake. On the other side of the car park, Lena strides away, content without needing to look back, the smile wide on her face. Behind her, the wanker is full on tantrum. His sandwich splatters all over the ground. Interior street day. Lena now walks alongside Sophia, 24, female, easygoing, who smiles at her story. She carries a skateboard in one hand, a backpack slung over one shoulder. And the funniest part is, he'd have needed scissors to cut the cable ties. <laughs> but who carries scissors? <laughs> oh, he didn't have to buy them and what our packet to see was notoriously hard to open without scissors she laughs to herself <laughs> that is such a you way to get revenge <laughs> like you'd have come up with a better plan I'd have punched his fucking lights out they smile at each other I love you I love you too they kiss and walk on down the street together all smiles Exterior Trafalgar Square day. They walk through the square, holding hands, their smiles still strong, until Sophia stops Lena. You all right? Yes, I just wanted to tell you something. Okay. Sophia stands opposite her and takes her hand. I wanted to tell you that these last four years have been the absolute best of my life. Well, me too. She gets distracted by two people in the crowd. Colin and Zoe Rain, 49 and 45, wave, wave at her. Wait, why are your parents... And I also wanted to say I am so excited to see where the next chapter of our life will take us. There is a loud whoop from behind them. Lena turns to see Terry, Savannah and Adam, 25, 23 and 23. And our friends are... She realises what this could be. She turns back to see Lena down on one knee, a ring raised to her. Lena Sharp, will you marry me? Lena can't believe it. Her eyes fill with tears and she can't speak. She can only nod, yes. The pair embrace and share a big kiss. Sophia's parents and their friends run in and join the celebrations. They jump and scream, joy that can't be tamed. Amongst the joy, Sophia slips the ring onto Lena's finger. I love you so much, I don't think anything can spoil this moment. Interior wedding planner's office day. Bruce, 33, pushy, sits behind his desk, a litter of leaflets and brochures in front of him. So, looking at everything you want, altogether we're looking in the region of twenty-five to £30,000. 
Lena and Sophia sit opposite him, shell-shocked, their joy well and truly tamed. And if we were looking for a more low-cost option? It's your one and only wedding day. Uh, can you really put a price on that? Okay, making a few cuts and adjustments. Anything around 20000 and you'll walk away happy. That's the Bruce Campbell guarantee. Lena looks like she's about to cry. We have payment plans. Is there any family money you could use? Not really. On either side of the family? Lena has generally started to cry. The family is a little complicated. Well, that's why we have the payment plans. Shall we make a start? Interior, the rain house, Lena's room, day. Lena lies on the bed, exasperated. Sophia's on the floor, sorting through a box of books and possessions. I could pick up some more shifts. Maybe sell some more what? books. I'm sure someone... What have you else... done? What? What have you done? Okay, I'm going to pause. I could pick up some more shifts, maybe sell some old books. I'm sure someone will spend 20k on Assorted Kids Bedtime Stories Volume 2. I'm going to have to tell them, aren't I? Sophia gets on the bed with her. You don't have to do anything. Could you ask your parents? They'd skip meals if they thought it had helped me. Trust me, I can't ask them to do that again. The big wedding. It's not the be-all and end-all, you know. But it's what I've always wanted. I was always going to have to tell them eventually. They'll just be a lot of awkward questions. Interior, the Sharp Mansion, living room, day. Marion and Peter Sharp, 46 and 60, sit on the sofa, both with full wine glasses. On the wall behind them, a large portrait of themselves. The rest of the room is equally posh. Lena sits opposite in a chair. She shrinks under their gaze. If it's money you want, we have told you. Send a request and we'll get back to you in three working days. It's not about money. Well, well it is a bit, but... Um... <laughs> it's always about money with you students. He's not a student anymore, darling. It's about, well, to put it plainly, I've a little bit been seeing someone since you knew. I know you're probably wondering why I didn't tell you. Mm -hmm. Well, I didn't know if it had lost. I didn't know if we'd survive uni or life or whatever, you know? <laughs> How long has this been going on? Four years. Four years? Three and a half, really. Four years, and you have deprived your mother. What you have deprived your mother? Peter, I think. What else have I missed? If it helps, I... I think it's pretty definitely going to last now. <laughs> she reveals the engagement ring from her pocket. She sips it on her finger and holds it up, her face nervous. Oh, my God. Peter, are you... Uh, I'm in shock, darling. My daughter. England. No, engaged. <laughs> Lena braces for impact. This calls for a... Not what Lena was expecting. You, you're not upset. I'm sad, darling. I'm furious that right now you could have firebombed the neighbours. Champagne is still champagne. I'll fetch us a bottle. Oh, not the top shelf stuff. That's for the Baxters two Sundays from now. My daughter is getting married, darling. I'll grab what I like. She goes. Peter gets up to shake Lena's hand. Marriage, huh? Yes, well. Uh, well done and all that. Interior, the sharp mansion, wine cellar day. Marion bum wiggles over to an expensive champagne bottle. Interior, the sharp mansion, living room day. Lena looks more relaxed now. We met at the Union Bar of all places. I'm so happy you're both happy for me. We will need to talk money because we're saving up for Sophia's gaggery idea and you wouldn't believe what weddings cost in this economy. <laughs> gaggery? Hmm. 
gay bakery. <laughs> She's gay and loves baking. It's the perfect union. Your partner's a she. Obviously, Dad. I'm marrying a woman. <laughs> oh. What are you doing that for? Marion appears. She pops the cork off the off into the room. Who's up for shampoos? Darling, uh, Sophie's just informed me. She's marrying a woman. <laughs> Where do you get this wicked sense of humour from? Oh, I'll never know. She starts to pour the champagne into flutes. I told you both at dinner before you knew. I remember because I basically shout myself doing it. Language. Sorry. Do you not remember that? Oh, yes. I remember now. Curious. <laughs> you have always had a fanciful sense of humour. Oh, so what are you trying to say? I'm gay. Oh, my God, I thought you were already done this. I'm gay and I'm engaged to a woman. Marion puts the champagne down and falls back into her seat. Oh, have you tried not? Exterior, the sharp mansion, driveway, continuous. Lena charges away in tears. She fumbles for her phone. Interior, the rain house, kitchen, day. Sophia's by her phone. The second it rings, she answers. How does it go? Oh, no. Oh, God. I'm so sorry. Exterior, the rain house, driveway, evening. Lena runs into Sophia's arms. It's okay. It's all okay. Sophia holds her for a few moments, then. Now, don't be mad. My parents guessed something was up. They wanted to help. Cheer up, party. A cheer up party. Interior, the rain house, living room, evening, music blares, a pride flag up on the wall, a slideshow of gay penguin marriages on the TV. Oh, the whole small room turned into celebration and joy. Smiley post its stuck everywhere. Colin and Zoe dance around the room. They wear frantic smiles aimed at Lena, who sits on the sofa who sits on the sofa and tries not to cry. Sophia looks on embarrassed, the kind only parents create. Is uh, this working? Yes, thank you. I'm starting to feel better. We, me and Colin, that is, just wanted to make sure you know that this place is as much a home for you as anywhere else. OK, you're more than welcome here. Nina can't keep up the lie. To keep the lie up, tears flood out. Oh, dear. Colin, get some tissues. Uh, I've, got, I've got a hanky. It's fine, guys, honestly. Keep dancing. This is meant to be a cheer-up party, after all. Stay cheery. Sophia oh. hugs Lena on the sofa. Colin and Zoe keep dancing. Uh, and that's, that's the end, end of that. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> so, thoughts on that? Hilarious. <laughs> Whether it's supposed to be or not, I don't know. But And... Um, absolutely love Catherine when she's posh. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I will put, I, I, pull I up about... talking to each other, I had to make a distinct difference between the Yeah, voices. very good. <laughs> mm. uh, on page four. Yeah. Uh, she realises what this could be. She turns her back to see Lena down yeah. on one knee. There's about three be, of those, yeah. That should be Sophia down on one knee. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> They're about that's three the times when they get crossed, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's easy that's to find, isn't it? If you do that search function, you can put in their name and quickly yeah. switch them. Um, but I really, really enjoyed it, and I want to know what's going on, what's going to finish, <laughs> and whether Marion's ever going to talk to Lena again. <laughs> you know, have you tried not? <laughs> <laughs> I, I genuinely, Very I mean, funny. I just, yeah. just, I could see Catherine as that mother, you know, champagne in one hand. You know. <laughs> just, have you tried not? <laughs> Thank you, Catherine. <laughs> Thank you. It's definitely made my day. <laughs> and with that, Catherine, what are your Very thoughts? Fun. <laughs> <laughs> Me, um, yeah, uh, I, I agree. I think it's very funny. Um, 
Uh, I was going to say about the, the mix up of the names here and there. So um, a quick proofread might be in order. But um, other than that, it's uh, formatted very well. The dialogue was written very well. Um, the visuals are great. It's very funny. Um, one thing I, I was wondering on with the voiceovers, would they, I think, I don't know, it might work better as a break into the fourth wall, perhaps. And that's quite um, popular at the moment as well, uh, which may or may not be a good thing <laughs> to go with the trend. But um, I think it would work quite well. It would be quite nice to have that um, break in there. But other than that, I really liked it. Really enjoyed it. Well done. Cool. Thank you. Rory? Uh, yeah, I I thought we were going for a flea bag moment there, and then we sort of veered off uh, into something different, which was which is great because I thought, oh, we we're going to mm. a bit of a formula, but then then we veered away, which is nice. Yeah, I think lovely characterization, nice dialogue, uh, moves along a good pace, um, and I was disappointed when we got to the end of page eleven because I wanted to know what happens next. Yes, yeah. so that's <laughs> that's really good. But yeah, what's next? Yeah, so, yeah, we yeah, need thumbs, the rest of it. Yeah, thumbs up from me. Okay, Emma. I think, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to suddenly sort of go against the grain on this because I really liked it too. And actually what was nice was we seemed to suddenly get to the end and that made me think that, you know, it wasn't dragging for me, which is mm -hmm. which is lovely. Um, I would just, I suppose, a couple of things just to look out for. I mean, I did feel that we were in capable hands, you know, which is um, always a nice feeling to have. You know, you're not worrying on behalf of the writer. Um, I don't know if it's a um, part of a film, the beginning of a film, or it's a short film, it's going to be a short film, whether it's, um, you know, the beginning of a series, um, you know, it's hard to tell what the pacing will be like if it's going on over a longer time, but I liked, I liked the pace, given what we were able to, to see. Um, yeah, just I suppose a few tiny things, like, um, you don't necessarily need to say charity shop finds and curly hair because they're not necessarily, you know, going against the grain of each other. And, you know, how helpful is it to be that prescriptive about what your characters look like? But I know we talk about this sometimes. I think Wanker is a bit of a cartoon baddie. And obviously um, uh, Marion is a little bit of a, um, you know, so I suppose a kind of um, cartoon Penelope <laughs> Keith type person, yeah, yeah. Margot. And um, <laughs> yeah. there's a kind of, um, yeah, so, I mean, it's, it's interesting. Margot I wonder, and Jerry. <laughs> yeah, I, I wonder whether there, there's going to be some gradation. I mean, I can see that the two main women can be played quite naturalistically in spite of, or maybe because of, you know, speaking to the camera or having a voiceover. I don't know if the voiceover is going to be shared um, or just, you know, kept as, as Lena. Um, I, I just kind of think it's quite funny. I just I'm don't really know about the style yet, which one you're going to go for. Mm. But it's quite funny because um, Lena is saying, who carries scissors? But who carries cable ties? You know, so that's great. <laughs> it's just been in the shop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just, um, you know, I just think there, there's a lot of charm. There's a lot of sweetness and um, the humour. And I would indeed like to know what happens next. Yeah, it, I, I just one one last thought was uh, it's a bit like, um, <clears throat> uh, twenty twenty three humor crashes into the nineteen eighties TV sitcom. My 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 one point bad point is we have no idea where and when it is, mm. and these things should be primary first page. Yeah, the the first the first uh, thing we get no, idea we get of where it is is the mention of Trafalgar Square, so yeah. that does put it squarely in London. But we could do with it on the first page. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it reminded me for some reason. It may just be the, the terrible um, overacting of the first voice I did, but it reminded me of um, Miranda, that kind of. Mm, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like you know what I call comedy or <laughs> whatever she's. <doing>. Yes. <laughs> Actually, bizarrely, that mo that mother character reminded me of um, Joanna Lumley as well in Ab <laughs> Fab, you know. Yes, Ab -fab. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah there were, I thought there was a bit of fabness about it, yeah. Any opportunity yeah. for a drink, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Champagne, yes, but it was definitely oh. Jeremy, wasn't it? Not well, the top shelf, no, darling, not the top shelf. The only thing I noticed was there were a few little uh, typos, you know, grammar things, uh, full stops where there could have been a comma. Uh, just just only because it was a cold read for me and I kind of hiccuped at those points where I thought that it was coming to an end and, oh, no, it wasn't really. That sent should have been a run-on sentence, should have been a comma, uh, but they were very few and far between, and I agree. Uh, oh, you. My, my, my other one one thing is is the relevance of the title. Yes, maybe we learn about that later. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe. yeah. It must be for the 
feared as in the slang term for having a partner who wasn't really your partner. Oh, to know. Yeah, yeah. Person, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, or yeah. maybe they're going Monty Pythons and they've got to wear a beard. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Is there any women out there? No, 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 no. <laughs> okay, but but yeah, I think we're all agreed we'd love to hear. Oh, definitely. Massive thumbs up on that Very one. Very enjoyable. Yeah. yeah. I'd love to hear about the casting. 